Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off discussing the release dates of both the Raptor Lake-based boards from Intel, which are Z790, as well as the release date of AMD's AM5 motherboards. This information is courtesy of PJ. I'll link uh, the um, post in the video description. And he is the editor as well as a reviewer over at Unico's Hardware. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. This website has been fairly accurate with multiple news stories in the past, but while they have had accuracy, of course, well, things can change, stuff can slip, and at the end of the day, you should take this with somewhat of a pinch of salt anyway. But, starting things out with Intel, and as we all know, Alder Lake is going to launch in Q4 2021. There's not a whole lot to say about Alder Lake that I've not said a trillion times at this point. It's going to be on the LGA 1700 socket. The package size is going to be considerably different, 37.5 by 45. And yeah, Alder Lake is a pretty big redesign for Intel. It's going to support things like DDR5 memory and it should offer quite a sizable jump in terms of single thread performance over what we have with uh, Skylake as well as Rocket Lake, but it's going to be in a very interesting position because of course it will have to face off against not only a Zen 3 refresh, which as we all know is the Zen 3 with Vcache, but also Zen uh, 4, which is going to release in Q4 2022, again, according to uh, PJ. Now, this will almost certainly be a really big transition for AMD, as the AM5 platform, again, will support technology such as DDR5, as well as PCIe Gen 4. And I've double-checked with a couple of my sources. I'm almost positive that the Q2 uh, 2022 release date is accurate. I'm holding back some information at the moment because I'm double checking it on AMD's plans to compete with Intel. So um, I'll probably put that video out in the next week or so, depending on how my schedule unfolds. But either way, the AM5 motherboards are going to bring major changes to uh, AMD's like kind of motherboards. And it's going to be interesting too, because we know about the Zen 3 refresh, AMD have already shown that off, and it's a tangible, sizable jump in performance over, uh, you know, standard vanilla Zen 3. But I believe that this is almost certainly going to be on AM4, because it doesn't really make sense for AMD to release the AM5 motherboards just for the Zen 3 refresh, given that it's very much, at least how AMD are pushing it anyway, kind of like a drop-in replacement. So perhaps I'm wrong on that, but I don't suspect that we're going to see the um, refresh work on a uh, AM5 motherboards. I suspect it is going to be AM4 only. But the next one is Intel's Raptor Lake, which is going to launch in Q3 2022. So it's basically following very quickly on with the uh, Zen 4 products. And I'm not surprised about this because for some time now I've been telling you guys that Zen 4 is going to be really just outpacing Alder Lake. Alder Lake is not going to be a bad processor and it's probably going to give Intel the win when it's released against, well, AMD in any games, for example. But yeah, Zen 4 is just going to absolutely demolish it. So Raptor Lake following in Q3 makes an awful lot of sense. Raptor Lake is going to be still on the same LGA 1700 socket, but it will offer a new motherboard, which is going to be Z790. Now, is an actual interesting thing that um, uh, videocards.com actually put out quite a while ago, which goes over some of the detail differences with Raptor Lake. Basically, it's definitely more of an optimization of Alder Lake, so I wouldn't say it's a brand new core but there are going to be some considerable differences over Alder Lake, and I do think it's possibly going to give it the win over Zen 4, but I wouldn't necessarily hold my breath on that, but it definitely will do better than Alder Lake anyway. Personally, I still think Zen 4 is probably going to be winning, particularly when it comes to obvious things like multi-thread performance. With this all said, though, these chips are still not final, so... Until we actually know final clock frequencies and stuff, it is quite difficult to be 100% certain on any of this in terms of how they'll end up stacking up against one another, that is. 
And while we're on the subject of AMD, there's a very interesting story that I just feel I have to discuss. And that is AMD are launching a new graphics card. And I have a feeling that the reception of this one is going to be, well, let's just say a bit mixed. AMD have released liquid cooled graphics cards in the past and we have fond memories of them. Well, okay, maybe we've got fond memories of them. But in this time of the market, it's a particularly interesting time for AMD to do this. Now, it is worth noting that products are typically, you know, in the pipeline for a long time, and they do generally have, like, tie-ins with their AIBs and kind of contract obligations to fulfill. But this one, I'll be rather curious to see how people kind of receive it. Currently, it's not available for purchase, at least directly, but you can grab hold of it through well basically integrators so if you want to pick up the card for example from the uh, website main gear or system integrators such as main gear you can do so and although we can't get an exact price if you look at their configurator tool courtesy of wccf for this one by the way you're looking at around 800 us dollars more for the liquid cooled variant rather than the air cooled variant which is substantial and unfortunately, we don't have benchmarks, so we have absolutely no idea what the performance difference is between the 6900 XT, the liquid cooled version, and the regular version, but I'm hearing around 5%. Now, how does it get that extra 5%? Well, the obvious one is that it has a higher TBP. It's running at 330 watts, and the clock frequencies also increase. So this means that we're seeing 2435 for the boost frequency and the game clock is 2250. That's all okay. I mean, honestly, with the you know regular air-cooled cards, you can definitely push them much higher frequencies than you know their stock frequency. It's not uncommon to hit 2500, 2600 megahertz on the 6800 XT. I've done that on two cards. I've done it on an MSI one and a reference AMD card. You know, it's not very difficult, especially if you're willing to play around with it a little bit with something like uh, Igor's more power tool. And also depending on, of course, your tolerance for the fans themselves. However, this is almost certainly cherry pick silicon, so I wouldn't be surprised if you can run at much higher frequencies. But wait, there's more. AMD have also outfitted this with faster RAM. So the RAM is running at 18 Gbps, which is a decent uptick in performance. And I think that this is an interesting one because personally speaking, and again, I stress this my personal opinion, I feel that that RAM speed should have been just the default for the 6900 XT. Again, that's my opinion. I realize that some people might feel differently. But yeah, it's kind of an interesting one, this card. Um, and given that NVIDIA have received so much flack for cards like the 3070 Ti, I'll be interested to see how AMD are kind of, well, just, yeah, just what happens with AMD here. I hope that these do go on general sale, just because I think it would be interesting to kind of get hold of one, if I could even get hold of one. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. It seems like a lot of extra cash for not a whole load of extra performance, honestly. And the big thing is that you can, of course, water cool your own 6900 XT. That's not a problem, but you will still be missing out on the faster memory. So again, I really wish that AMD had released the 6900 XT with the faster memory. If I had to guess, it's probably just to have kept the card a little bit cheaper so it could hit the 1000 US dollar MSRP price. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. Let me know what you think about this one, guys especially the 6900 XT liquid cooled card. It looks cool. <laughs> That's my personal opinion. I mean, yeah, I think it looks cool. I'm a bit disappointed that the AIO isn't larger, like a 240 or 360. I think that would be kind of kind of cool. I'm guessing that it might have chosen a smaller one, maybe A, because of cost, and B, just because it's easier to kind of cram into different uh, system configurations. But that's just kind of a nitpicky thing on my part. So yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, apologies, by the way, for not being on camera this, for this video, but unfortunately, well, yeah, I was kind of waiting for stuff to get delivered uh, for my new set, and let's just say stuff hasn't been delivered yet. So I kind of just like 
pulled stuff apart expecting to sort it out uh, yesterday slash today and it was just like oh okay then I guess not so much so uh, I might have to go back to kind of the, the older configuration for a bit but hopefully it gets delivered soon I'm living in that hope <laughs> insert copium meme here with that said take care of yourselves guys bye for now